Hello and welcome to the second part of Welcome to Silver Bullet, a series of videos in which I will uh, demo and explain uh, some of the features of Silver Bullet. In the previous one, we focused on a single page. In many cases, I would argue probably all of them, you probably want to create multiple pages, right? You have more nodes you want to keep track of. And of course, Silver Bullet supports that. Um, we start out in the index page, but we can navigate to other pages as well. And one way to do this, there's multiple ways, is to use the page picker. So up top right there, we have this book icon, which brings up the page picker. And it shows you all the pages that exist in your space. You can use the button. You can also use what I usually do, Command K or Control K on Windows, uh, Windows and Linux. And then you get a list of all the pages in your space. By default, if you start out with an empty space, you get two uh, pages to start. The first one is the index page that we just looked at. The other is the config page, which is a page that you will use to make like tweak some uh, configuration settings and things like that in Silver Bullet. We're not going to focus on that. So from as far as we can tell, there's effectively one content page in our space to start. To create a new page, you simply start to type a name. For instance, you say, hey, I would like to create a page for Harry Potter, right? And of course, as you type, this list filters down and there's no page named Harry Potter yet. So it offers you an option to create that actual page, right? That's the action here. I can click that, I can hit enter, and now this page will be created. This is, is a page on Harry. Okay. Now I can navigate back to the index page using this home button up here, or I can press Alt Alt H and now we're back. Now, if you go back to the page picker, you'll see that indeed now the Harry Potter page has been added here. So far, so good. Um, what you can do, and I will probably do moving forward, is put slashes in names of, page, uh, of, of pages. And what that will implicitly do is we'll create the folder to make that happen. So rather than, um, uh, and actually let me just demonstrate renaming a page right now, I can say I want to have a folder books and inside of that folder I have a, uh, a page called Harry Potter. So this will now rename the page. Uh, you'll see that the URL will have changed, right? So books like Harry Potter. Folders in principle have no specific meaning or functionality in uh, Silver Bullet. There's some convenient features here that you can do. For instance, if you go into the page picker and then you hit uh, space. It will auto complete your folder name. So if I now want to add another book like uh, Harry Potter 2 or whatever, right? Um, it will, you don't have to type the books part, but that's about it. Like for, from Silver Bullet's perspective, folders are not a thing that it cares about. If you want to use that to structure your notes in some way, you can. I personally do this to some degree. I have some folders, but not very deep hierarchies. I have some folders around, like I don't know, a people folder, a meetings folder, uh, that type of thing. I do not like really invest in a very de deliberate, like uh, advanced folder structure. Um, as I'm typing here the, the name of an, a page that doesn't exist, what you'll notice is that the first uh, hit on this list is actually an existing page. If I would now hit enter, I will go to that Harry Potter page, which actually is not what I want to do. I want to create that page uh, called Harry Potter 2. Now I can do that by clicking. I can do that by just navigating there. What I can also do is uh, hit shift enter, which basically will says, please create or navigate to the page with exactly the name that I just entered. Right. Okay, so now we have another book page. All right, so now we have two pages. Um, by the way, you will notice that the order of these pages is shifting from time to time. And it, the, the goal is to be somewhat intelligent here. If you're currently already in your Harry Potter 2 page, it's not likely that you will want to use the page picker to navigate to the page you're already on. That's why it's kind of like downgraded in terms of ranking. Um, for the rest, it's ordered uh, as a mix of like what pages were recently updated or recently opened. So like more recently opened pages are higher to the top, right? Which is probably what you want, right? That, that is a reason that we do work that way. Um, 
All right, so we can navigate with uh, the page picker and this is convenient, right? Like I can just quickly type in names and go like that and like, navigate my space just with the keyboard and some quick page navigation. This is one way of doing it. Um, another way of doing it is by creating an intricate web of links, right? Some people would prefer this wiki model where they start with their beautifully designed index page that then links to, I don't know, work related pages and the other related pages and they navigate the whole space by clicking links like a personal wikipedia almost right so how do we do that um how we create a link uh, using this syntax double uh, square bracket and you'll immediately get completion for what page you may want to link to so let's say we want to create a link to the harry potter page here uh, we can now go there either by clicking or by uh, command or control enter to navigate there if you want to just use the keyboard and now we're on this page what you notice and that wasn't here before if you remember is this section or widget as we call it linked mentions at the bottom linked mentions show you a list of all the other pages elsewhere in your space that link to this particular page so because we created a link on the index page to this Harry Potter page at position 90, if you care, uh, there's now a mention here. Uh, and it, it gives you a quick snippet of like to roughly give you an, an idea of the context in which that link uh, um, appeared. This is useful because now you can uncover or discover like all the different links that exist in your space, not just by following uh, links in one direction but you can do bi-directional link following um, right so that's what automatically happens uh, what you will also notice and let me just do that here if i rename a page so i rename this page uh, from harry potter to harry potter 3 it automatically it mentions hey i updated one backlink so what is a backlink backlink is a link to this page that has been now been automatically changed because like on the index page there used to be a link to Harry Potter that page no longer exists has been renamed to Harry Potter 3 and that link is now automatically updated and this is where we start to see that silver bullet is doing a little bit more than just serving and saving text files right and making them look pretty it has some understanding of links that exist in the page where they link to and it is able to use that information to then make updates to other pages when for instance you do uh, re end up renaming a page okay so that's one thing so that's the links mentioned we did renaming we can also delete pages so let me create another page De delete me right uh, hello so now we have delete me page and then i can run the command delete page it deletes that page and then it moves you back in history of the page where you were before you actually were visiting the, the delete me page all right fine aspiring pages this is a feature that is has been there for a while but probably not everybody is aware of it so what is an aspiring page an aspiring page is a page that has been linked to but does not yet exist so let's say that here i'm adding a books harry potter 4 um, link this page is now become an aspiring page you can tell it's aspiring because it's red orangey colored so you can tell that it doesn't yet exist the hint, the, the overlay uh, tooltip says that it, clicking there will actually create that page. Um, it will also appear in uh, page name completion. So for instance, if I do completion here, there will be a reference to Harry Potter 4, but it will mention that, hey, this was linked somewhere, but it's not been created yet, right? But clearly like Silver Bullet knows that this page maybe at some point wants to be, needs to be created. So it, it's, track, it's tracking it basically. This is useful because now I can also in different parts of my page uh, space link to pages that I have not yet created, um, but then ultimately probably will want to. So how do I get a list of all those pages? Well, actually they appear in your page list, in your page picker list. So here at the bottom, and they do tend to appear at the bottom, um, I see all my aspiring pages. How can I tell these are aspiring pages? Is that they have this create page link because effectively 
what you would do by navigating there is you would create that page on the fly. So if we go there now, you will see an empty page because it's not there yet with an immediate linked mention, right? Because it's already been linked to from this other place. Hello. And now this page is no longer an inspiring page. It's just a regular page. And all the links now appear as regular links you can follow. So these are uh, aspiring pages. Another thing you can do is um, export a page. The question is often like, how do you, printing is not really built in right now, but like sometimes you work on something and then you want to kind of export it into a Google doc or a Word, Word, uh, uh, a Word doc or something of this sort. The way you can do that is you can, I don't know, let's apply some interesting markup. Heather, blah. There's, uh, you can use the export command, page or selection, or command E. By default, it exports the whole page, but you can also just do a selection if you like, right? Um, and then you can export it into multiple formats. If you have it configured, you can export this into a GitHub repository, or you can turn it into a gist. That's a bit advanced, we're not going to look into that. You can copy it into the clipboard as a clean markdown. So in that case, like certain specific silver bullet things like page links are going to be translated to regular markdown links. Or and that's what we'll look at here is you can um, copy it to the clipboard as rich text. Now, if you go into create a new uh, Google Doc, for instance, by the way, if you didn't know, docs.new is a thing, so that's useful. I can now just paste and there you go. I have a like um, rich text encoded version of this markdown that I created here, right? So this is a great way to kind of like do the work in Silver Bullets, your first pass, then move into, I don't know, Confluence or Google Docs or something else and paste it as rich text there and, and share it and continue working that way. All right. Then the last thing I would want, uh, want to mention here is linked tasks. And this is a feature that I use a lot. Honestly, for me, it's almost like the killer feature of Silver Bullet. And I think very few people actually realize it even exists. So let me set up a little bit of a scenario here. So what, let's say that you are a manager or you have a lot of meetings with people. And what you end up doing is you create pages for each of these people. So let's say I have a, a person slash Hank page. So knows about Hank. And you have a person says Fred page, knows about Fred, and you have a person slash Jenny page. Cool. Now, as you're talking to Jenny, um, you realize that there's something, something to be discussed uh, with Fred. Now, two things here, because this is the first time that I'm actually linking to a page, I think that is in a folder. Right now you see the full path in here, like you see the full path appear in here. And the moment I move out, it collapses to, you know, in kind of like a shorter form. Don't panic, right? Like the full link is still there. It just tries to kind of condense the space a little bit, right? Okay, something to be discussed with Fred. And now if I turn this into a task, now the uh, linked task feature is going to kick in. So I'm talking to Jenny, and as we're talking, I realize, yeah, we have something that I need to discuss about A, B, and C. And what I can do is create a task in here, in these notes, without having to jump to the Fred context, right? I'm still, I'm talking to Jenny, I'm making notes, I'm just adding a task here for Fred. Then the next day, let's say, I'm actually talking to Fred, I get this section at the top, this widget at the top called linked tasks which basically act as a reminder of me of like, right, yesterday I was talking to Jenny and there was something to be discussed with you. Now I'm going to, actually I'm making my notes from this meeting, um, right? And we are like discussing whatever I need to be discussed. I'm just checking this off in this list and blah, dee, da, right? If I want, I can now re get rid of that task because it's been completed. This will only show tasks that have not been completed. Uh, if I go back to Jenny, you will notice that this task has also been marked as done. Uh, so it automatically keeps these things up to date. But this is extremely convenient way of kind of like staying in the same context that you were, making notes or actually like creating tasks for things that have to ha happen elsewhere, like different projects or with different people. Um, 
but without having to leave. And th I use this a lot. It's, it's very convenient for me. It's one of, as I said, like for me, it's one of the killer features where when I started to get used to using that, uh, I'm like, wow, yeah, now it all makes sense. Like this, this is starting to become very powerful. All right. I think that's enough for the second video. Um, this is how you can use Silver Bullet with multiple pages. I think it's convenient. There's different ways of doing this. There's different ways of structuring this. Uh, but it gives you a sense of what's possible there and how you can leverage that. All right, see you next time.